Good morning and welcome on this 14th Sunday after Pentecost. This Sunday, many of our Anglican churches are reopening after being closed since mid-March due to the pandemic. There is excitement in the air, but there is also concern and caution lingering as congregations seek to keep their neighbors safe while still longing to gather to offer praise and thanksgiving, many around a Eucharistic table. The cost of COVID-19 has been high, lives have been lost, and this sobers us. Social distancing and masks are our new normal to keep everyone safe. We live in a strange time indeed, but we will get through it and we will get through it together. On another note, for the next five Sundays, our online worship will carry an environmental theme as we follow the season of creation initiated by the World Council of Churches in 2007. It's a global ecumenical initiative. Thank you for joining us as we feast on the Word of God once again. I'm Gail Marie Henderson, the incumbent of the parish of Muskoka Lakes, and today I will be leading our time of worship from, from the altar of St. James the Apostle in Port Carling. Frank, would you be able to welcome everyone, please? Thank you. reconciling the world to himself and he has entrusted us with the message of reconciliation
pray. We thank you, O oh God, that you have again brought us together on this Sunday to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and our minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, in word, and in deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Jesus, I've forgotten the words that you have spoken, promises that burned within my heart have now grown dim. With a doubting heart I follow the paths of earthly wisdom. Forgive me for my unbelief, renew the fire again. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy on me, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy on me. I have built an altar where I worship things of man. I've taken journeys that have drawn me far from you. Now I am returning to your mercies ever flowing. Pardon my transgressions, help me love you again. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have forever shining like a beacon in the night. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. people, that richly bearing the fruit of good works, we may by you be richly rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. 
and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably, as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Yeah. 
ten thousand years bright shining as the sun we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun the Lord be with you the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of one or two witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the other refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth, about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of Christ. As usual, Jesus gives us genius advice on how to deal with conflict in our lives. I want to spend some time examining his words, the different steps that he recommends, which I will say right from the beginning can be very hard for us to take. But if the path was easy, there would be no conflict. It is this path that Jesus teaches us. That is the path of wisdom and reconciliation. He says, if you are offended Go to the person who offended you and tell them. This can be a tough step. You might need to spend a lot of time in prayer, calming down, <laughs> exercising compassion, before you can calmly tell someone, you hurt me. Sometimes we feel so vulnerable that it is a difficult step to take when we are hurt. And yet Jesus says, this is the first step not going behind back and telling everyone else, not trying to rally people to your side. Go to the person who hurt you and say, you hurt me. Because there are two alternatives here. Either they intended to hurt you or they didn't, and it's all a misunderstanding and can be cleared up before it becomes a big conflict. If they did intend to hurt you, and are still angry with you, Jesus says, go again with one or two people that you both trust so that there is a witness to hear everything you are saying to one another. Sometimes conflicts are the work of both people. It's just that neither one of them can see that until somebody objective points it out. Go with a witness, says Jesus. Let that witness help you talk to each other. If that still doesn't work, if they still aren't sorry that they hurt you, tell it to the church. Let the community around the two of you act as witnesses to try to draw you both together. Many of you in your church life have seen this. People encouraging love and reconciliation. But if someone won't even listen to the church, if you have tried everything and yet they still insist they are justified in hurting you and withholding reconciliation, Jesus says, let that person be to you as somebody who is outcast. Now that's difficult. 
Walking away, letting go, and letting God, we tend to think we can solve all problems, but only if the parties are willing. And if you have tried directly, if you have tried with people you trust, if you have tried with people in the church, they still won't listen. They still won't reconcile. Their hearts are hard. Let it go, says Jesus, and leave it up to God. Because what is bound here on earth is bound in heaven. What is loosed here on earth is loosed in heaven. God sees our conflicts. God knows our hurts. But God also knows who is trying to reconcile and who has hardened their hearts. These things, when they are plaguing us in our relationships on earth, are seen by heaven. And if we are true to seeking reconciliation, God knows our heart and knows that we tried. You see this in the Old Testament reading for today as well. The people of Israel have been in bondage and slavery. They have been oppressed. Their cries have come before God, and he has come to deliver them. He does this by sending Moses and Aaron and sends them directly to Pharaoh first. It's time. Let the people go. Pharaoh's heart is hardened. Again and again and again, God tries. The same way Jesus is encouraging us to keep trying directly. Pharaoh's heart is hardened. And so the Lord tells the people, get ready to go. Just get ready to leave. This story for our ancestors is a point of salvation. This Passover that becomes the moment that leads to their freedom. It is a story of freedom for them, but it is also a story of the destruction that a hardened heart can cause. And so we hear Jesus' words reflected in that story so long ago of our ancestors when God said, I have tried, Pharaoh's heart is hard, and it is just time to leave. This week, I hope you will contemplate all of those areas of your life where you still have a hardened heart because of a hurt. Perhaps it is possible to go through these steps and try to reconcile. If so, this is the time to try. If so, your church family can help you. That's what we're here for, says Jesus. The witnesses that can bring you to reconciliation help you see one another's point of view. Perhaps it is not possible for you to go through these steps. It is time to leave it, says the Lord. It's time to let it go. It's time to leave it in the hands of God. It takes a great deal of faith and compassion to do this whether it be the steps toward reconciliation as Jesus has outlined them, or the steps toward walking away as our Israelite ancestors were called to do. Either path is the path on which God joins you mightily because you are leaving hate. You are leaving hurt. You are leaving a hardened heart, and choosing something better. This is the gospel message, and it has been our cry for centuries. Let us practice it, not only in the hurts in our lives, not only to heal the hurts in our churches, not only to heal the hurts in our communities and our families, but also to give witness to the world today as it did centuries ago that the path of God 
is the path to love, the path to salvation, and all else must be left behind. Amen. And we will gather to, we will join together in this ancient uh, confirmation of our faith. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like it unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Using prayers from the season of creation litanies. Let us pray to God that he will bring to fruition all that he desires for his creation. You have created the universe by your eternal word and have blessed humankind in making us stewards of the earth. We pray for your world that we may share and conserve its resources and live in reverence for the creation and in harmony with one another. Father, Lord of creation, in your mercy, hear us. You have given the human race a rich land, a land of streams and springs, wheat and barley, vines and oil and honey. We have made by sin a world of suffering and sorrow. We pray for those who bear the weight of affliction, that they may come to share the life of wholeness and plenty. Father, Lord of creation, in your mercy, hear us. In Christ, you call us to a new way of life, loving our neighbors before ourselves. Help us to treat with care and respect the world as it is, as we live in hope and anticipation of the world as it will be, when your kingdom comes and your will is done. Thank you for those living and departed who have shown a true respect for your creation. Help us to follow in their footsteps until with them we see you face to face, where all is made new in Christ our Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now is our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you, and you have promised through your beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and our petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. My Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. this day to love and to serve your Lord. Amen.